You went to the Mecca of robotics, which is CMU, <laughs> Carnegie Mellon University. You got a PhD there. So maybe by way of advice and maybe by way of story and memories, what does it take to get a PhD in robotics at CMU? Oh. And maybe you can throw in there some advice for people who are thinking about doing work in artificial intelligence and robotics and are thinking about whether to get a PhD. It's funny, I actually went, I was at uh, CMU for undergrad as well and didn't know anything about robotics coming in and was doing, you know, electrical computer engineering, computer science, and really got more and more into kind of AI and then fell in love with autonomous driving. And at that point, like that was just by a big margin, like such a incredible, like central spot of, uh, of develop, of investment in that area. And so what I would say is that like robotics, like for all the progress that's happened is still a really young field. There's a huge amount of opportunity. Now that opportunity shifted where something like autonomous driving has moved from being very research and academics driven to being commercial driven where you see the investments happening um, in commercial. Now there's other areas that are much younger um, and you see like kind of grasping and manipulation, making kind of the same sort of journey that like autonomy made and there's other areas as well. What I would say is the space moves very quickly Anything you do a PhD in, like it is in most areas, will evolve and change as technology changes and constraints change and hardware changes and the world changes. Um, and so the beautiful thing about robotics is that it's super broad. It's not a narrow space at all, and it can be a million different things in a million different industries. And so uh, it's a great opportunity to come in and get a broad foundation on AI, machine learning, computer vision, systems, hardware, sensors, all these separate things. You do need to like go deep and find something that you're like really, really passionate uh, about. Obviously, like just like any PhD, this is like a five, six year kind of uh, endeavor. And you have to love it enough to go super deep to learn all the things necessary to be super deeply functioning in that area and then contribute to it in a way that hasn't been done before. And in robotics, that probably means um, more breadth because robotics is rarely kind of like one particular kind of narrow technology. And it means being able to collaborate with teams where like one of the coolest aspects of like my the, exp the experience that I like kind of cherish in our PhD is that we actually had a pretty large AV project that for that time was like a pretty serious initiative where you got to like partner with a larger team and you had the experts in perception and the experts in planning and the staff and the mechanical engineers. It was a dropper challenge. Um, so I was working on the uh, a project called UPI back then. Mm -hmm. Uh, which was basically the off-road version of the DARPA challenge. It. it was a DARPA-funded project for basically like a large off-road vehicle that you would like drop and then give it a waypoint 10 kilometers away and it would have to navigate a completely unstructured In an off-road environment. environment. Yeah. So like forests, ditches, rocks, vegetation. And so it was like a really, really interesting kind of a hard problem where like wheels would be up to my shoulders. It's like gigantic, yeah. right? Yeah. By the way, AV for people stands for autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so what I, what I think is like the beauty of robotics, but also kind of like the expectation is that um, there's um, spaces in computer science where you can be very, very narrow and deep. Mm -hmm. Robotics, one of the the necessity, but also the beauty of it is that it forces you to be excited about that breadth and that partnership across different disciplines that enable it. But that also opens up so many more doors where you can go and you can do robotics in almost any category. Where robotics isn't a in, isn't really an industry. It's like it, it's like AI, right? It's like the application of physical automation to. Uh, you know, to all these other worlds. And so you can do robotic surgery, you can do vehicles, you can do factory automation, you can do healthcare, you can do like uh, leverage the AI around the sensing to think about static sensors and scene understanding. So um, so I think that's gotta be the expectation and the excitement. And it uh, breeds people that are probably a little bit more collaborative and more uh, excited about um, working in teams. Uh, if I could briefly comment on the fact that the robotics people I've met in my life uh, from CMU and MIT, they're really happy people. Yeah. Because I think it's the collaborative thing. Yeah. I think, I think you don't, you. <laughs> You're not like a sitting in like the fourth basement. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> with the, like, which yeah. when you're doing machine learning purely software, yeah. it's very tempting to just disappear into your own hole yeah. and never collaborate. And and there that breeds a little bit more of the silo mentality of like, 
I have a problem. It's almost like negative to talk to somebody else or yeah. something like that. But robotics folks are just very collaborative, very yeah. friendly. And just And there's also an energy a, of like, a, you get to confront the physics of reality often, yeah. which is humbling and also exciting. So it's humbling when it, it yeah. fails and exciting when it finally it's works. It's like a purity of the passion. And you got to remember that like right now, like robotics and AI is like just all the rage and autonomous vehicles and all this. Like 15 years ago and 20 years ago, like it wasn't that deeply lucrative. People that went into robotics, they did it because they were like, thought it was just the coolest thing in the world yeah. to like make physical things intelligent yeah. in the real world. And so there's like a raw passion where they went into it for the right reasons and so forth. And so it's really great space. And that organizational challenge, by the way, like um, when you think about the challenges in AV, we talk a lot about the technical challenges, the organizational challenges through the roof where um, you think about the the what it takes to build an AV system and you have companies that are now thousands of people and um, you know, you look at other really hard technical problems like an operating system, it's pretty well established. Like you kind of know that there's a file system, there's virtual memory, there's this, there's that, there's like uh, um, caching and like, and there's like a really reasonably well-established modularity and APIs and so forth. And so you can kind of like scale it in an efficient fashion. That doesn't exist anywhere near to that level of maturity in autonomous driving right now. And tech stacks are being reinvented, organizational structures are being reinvented. You have problems like pedestrians that are not isolated problems. They're part sensing, part behavior prediction, part planning, part evaluation. And like one of the biggest challenges is actually how do you solve these problems where the mental capacity of a human is starting to get strained on how do you organize it and think about it where you know you have this like multi-dimensional matrix that needs to all work together. And so that makes it kind of cool as well because it's not like solved at all uh, from, you know, like what what, is, what does it take to actually scale this, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at like other gigantic challenges that have, you know, th that have been success successful and are way more mature, there's a stability to it. And like maybe the autonomous sp vehicle space will get there, but right now just as many uh, technical challenges as they are, there are like organizational challenges and how do you like solve these problems that touch on so many different areas and efficiently tackle them while like maintaining progress among all these constraints um, while scaling.